What started the beef between Michael Jordan and Isaiah Thomas? One of the biggest rivalries that the NBA has seen is the one between the Chicago Bulls and the Detroit Pistons from the late 80s and the beginning of the 90s. The Bulls were led by young and emerging Michael Jordan, while the Pistons leader was the Chicago-born Isaiah Thomas. Those Pistons won the majority of the playoff series against the Bulls, but Jordan and the Bulls won the last one, and by many are seen as the winners in that rivalry. The rivalry between Jordan and Thomas, or maybe even the hatred, is still present even though it's been 30 years since their last battle. Again, the best thing about rivalries is that 30 years later they're still not over. The most infamous incident from those playoff battles between the Bulls and the Pistons is the way it ended. In 1991, after three consecutive playoff losses to the Pistons, Chicago finally beat Detroit and they did it by sweeping them in four games. Isaiah Thomas and the Pistons didn't take that loss well as they walked off the court without shaking hands with Jordan and his teammates. Almost 30 years after the event, Thomas supposedly regrets the way they handled the loss. Knowing what we know now and the aftermath of what took place, I think all of us would have stopped and said, hey, congratulations, like they do now. I mean, we would have done it. Of course we would have done it. But during that period of time, that's just how it was passed. When you lost, you left the floor. That was it, said Thomas when asked about the incident. But it seems like Jordan doesn't buy that. On the filming of the Last Dance documentary, when he was shown what Thomas has to say about the Pistons leaving the court early, MJ said the following. Well, I know it's all bullshit. Whatever he says now, you know it wasn't his true actions then. He's had time enough to think about it, or the reactions of the public has kind of changed his perspective of it. You can show me whatever you want. There's no way you can convince me he wasn't an asshole. Well, we all know this part of the controversy because it was all filmed and we saw it. The real question is, what started their beef? What was the reason? When did it happen? Who did what? Who said what? So before we go on to see what really happened between Michael Jordan and Isaiah Thomas, Make sure you like the video and comment down below about your favorite part of the video and subscribe to Top 10 Everythings with notification bell on. So let's get back to the topic. There are multiple stories on what started the beef between MJ and Isaiah. One thing is for sure, it happened way before the Pistons and the Bulls met in the playoffs. Thomas started his career in 1981 when he was drafted by the Pistons with the second overall pick right after the Dallas Mavericks drafted Mark Aguirre. By the time Michael Jordan joined the league in 1984, Thomas was already one of the best point guards in the league and the regular All-Star with winning the All-Star Game MVP in 1984. Being from Chicago, Thomas followed what was going on with the Bulls and their emerging young star. Apparently, when Jordan was selected to be a part of the All-Star Game in his rookie season, Thomas got an idea to make things hard for the rookie representing his hometown. There's a long-standing theory that Thomas was a conspirator to freeze Jordan out during the 1985 All-Star Game, where Jordan started as a rookie and scored only 7 points while shooting 2 of 9 from the field. The game is now widely referred to as the freeze-out. It was widely reported that several All-Stars, led by Isaiah, were annoyed by some of Jordan's actions leading up to the game and decided to deny him the ball during the game. According to Charlie Vinson, a free press sports writer at the time, Thomas and former Spurs star and Detroit native George Gervin denied Jordan the ball to teach him a lesson. Several hours after the game, when Thomas, his personal advisor Dr. Charles Tucker, and Gervin met as they were preparing to board a flight for Detroit, they spoke for a minute, then broke out into gales of laughter. The story is confirmed by Dr. Tucker as well. We were talking about how good they got Jordan, Tucker said. I got together with a bunch of the guys Saturday and talked about it, but I think some of them thought we were overdid it. The guys weren't serious about doing anything to Jordan. They just meant they weren't going to go out of their way for him and let him do what he wanted. They played him hard. He didn't get off. This story found its way back to Jordan's ears immediately. And luckily for him, the very first game after the All-Star break was against the Pistons. Jordan scored a career-high 49 points, 15 rebounds, 5 assists, and 4 steals to lead the Bulls to an overtime win over the Pistons. And right there and then, the rivalry was born. Even more interesting story of how Jordan and Isaiah Beef started has John Sally, who played with Thomas in Detroit when they were going against MJ and the Bulls, and later joined Jordan in Chicago to win the 1996 NBA championship with the Bulls. Per Sally, Thomas's whole issue with Jordan started when Thomas's nephew wore a Michael Jordan jersey when he went back to his visit his family in his hometown of Chicago. Isaiah goes home and his nephew is wearing a Bulls jersey, a Michael Jordan Bulls jersey. 
He said, Hey, what are you doing? We're in Chicago. That's my team, the boy responds. It's his nephew. He was not really understanding that the great Isaiah Thomas plays for Detroit. We don't wear that. We wear this. Isaiah was mad at that. Not to Michael, personally. In his brain, every time I play against this dude, I'm going to try to go off so my nephew sees this is a jersey you should wear. Soon after those events, the playoff clashes between the Pistons and the Bulls started. The bad boy Pistons were a more experienced and more physical team who had special Jordan rules that were enforced to stop MJ. Bill Lambeer, Rick Mahorn, Dennis Rodman, and others were hitting Jordan off the floor anytime they had a chance to do so. The Bulls simply couldn't find a say to go over the Pistons in their first three playoff battles. Finally, in 1991, the Bulls defeated the Pistons and went on to win their first NBA championship. That was the beginning of the Bulls era and the end of the bad boy Pistons. But the MJ-Isaiah rivalry wasn't done yet. In 1992, USA Basketball was preparing for the Barcelona Olympics, trying to form the best basketball squad ever. Many believe that Michael Jordan put an ultimatum to the USA Basketball, saying that he wouldn't play if Isaiah is part of the team. In the Last Dance documentary, MJ denied responsibility for what happened. If you want to attribute that to me, go ahead and be my guest. But it wasn't me, said Jordan. In the 1991-1992 season, right before the Olympics, Thomas, at the age of 30, made his 11th consecutive All-Star appearance and played 78 games, averaging 18.5 points and 7.5 assists per game. He was an NCAA champion, two-time NBA champion, a Finals MVP, and five All-NBA selections. Yet, he was excluded from the greatest basketball team ever. No one has ever confirmed that Jordan had anything to do with Isaiah not being invited to the Dream Team. Anyway, Thomas is hurt by that fact. Being left from the dream team, that personally hurt me. In 1980, I was on the Olympic team. As a matter of fact, I was voted the Male Athlete of the Year in 1980 for the USA Olympic team. And the only thing that's missing from my resume is not being on the dream team. If I'm not a part of the dream team because of a lapse of emotion in terms of not shaking someone's hand, if that's the reason why I didn't make the team, then I am more disappointed today than I was back then when I wasn't selected. Thank you for watching this video, and I'll see you next time with another amazing video.